Pan, that was a really great song called Two Dimensions. It was from the musical Dead Pan Anti-Fan, written by Emma Gray and Sally Whitwell. Sally, thank you so much for coming in today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's good having you um, in the Founders Studio and, and working with these two great singers, Remy Owen and Lydia Milosevjevic. Yes. Sav- yeah. <laughs> Quite a mouthful. It well is. worth learning because she's going far. That's going to be a yeah. big star. She is, I think. So tell us more about this musical, Dead Pan anti <gasps> Yes, that's a mouthful too. Uh, it's, uh, it was actually a teen novel written by my high school friend Emma Gray, whom I graduated in uh, 1991, um, which feels a very long time ago now. She sent me this book and it was totally not my thing. Like it's a story about a boy band and a girl that doesn't like boy bands. And I was thinking, I'm going to hate this, but I'm going to read it because it's by my high school friend. And then I read I read it and I couldn't put it down. It was such a page turner. And I thought, this teen novel is a musical. Um, and Emma said, no, it's a movie. And I said, do you know what? It sings off the page. I'm going to write a song from your book and you will see. And um, You convinced her. I did convince her. And That's so, wonderful. Yeah. So you got most of the way through this musical now? Yes. We've fi- well, we finished writing Deadpan Antifan, which we, we did a little program, a fantastic development program at the VCA um, with an organisation called Homegrown who foster new musical writers mm-hmm. in Australia. So that was such a fantastic opportunity because yeah. we're newbies. We have never written a thing like this before and it mm. was just really confronting um, to be up on with this panel in front of us of really experienced theatre makers, television people, um, people who perform, people who direct. Uh, it was it was really fantastic and I learnt a lot. That was a very steep learning curve. Um, Sometimes one, that's fun though, right? Throw yourself in the deep end. And, oh. Especially if you've got all the support that's right there for you. Yes, and they were so open and so helpful, you know, with saying sometimes ruthless things like, no, no, that has to go. Or, yeah. you know, cut this song or do this and turn all of that around and who do who is that? We don't know who that character is and all that stuff that made us really... You'll get to question that way later, think. wouldn't you, on your own yeah. work. And it's it's so valuable. There's just not enough of that kind of opportunity around for people who write um, musical theatre and opera. There needs to be more. There does. Um, I think so too. So looking at the kind of work that you're doing, sometimes you've got pieces like this one mm-hmm. where you are starting uh, on your own initiative and then other mm-hmm. times you're, uh, you're commissioned to do work. Yes. Uh, so, so I'm doing a commission right now for a mega ensemble who are fantastic. It's the first year that I've worked with Omega Ensemble as a performer um, and we recorded um, the Philip Glass Violin Sonata and also a world premiere work by Nico Muley, um, whose you know, opera Marnie was recently premiered at the Met. So he's a fantastic composer and um, it was really great to work with them in that way. And then they commissioned me to write this trio for violin, cello and harp. So yet That's another an interesting combination, isn't it? I know, it's such a steep learning curve. Um, I'm learning so much about the harp at the moment, which is really fantastic. And they, you know, they're very open to giving me feedback so I can send stuff to them at any time and they'll be giving me, no, that's impossible to play right. or my yeah. hand's not that big or yeah. whatever the thing is. Um, so because you're working with a harp, which mm. is something new for you, um, you're finding that you have to get that feedback all the way through the process? Oh, yes. But yes. what if you're doing commissioned works where you know what you're doing, like you're talking about, say, maybe a choir with a piano, which is something you're very familiar with. Mm. Do you work in the same way? Like do you get feedback from the organisers of that choir? Uh, well, yes. I mean, I'm really – I work a lot with, with Sydney Children's Choir and – so I'm very accustomed to writing for young voices. Writing for adult voices, however, is a really it's a really different instrument. Well, they can uh, be very different people too, right? Yes. Mm. And so I'm writing a piece for Adelaide chamber singers at the moment who are, you know, they're just highly accomplished, really experienced singers, and certainly your vocal instrument changes as you progress across, you know, through your life. So something that would be super excellent for a 14-year-old to sing will be not great for someone who's 38. But I, I know those instruments reasonably well. So, yes, it's it's easier for me to work in isolation 
with that, but with unfamiliar instruments, I'm just that really annoying composer that sends you an email every 10 minutes saying, I don't know if you can reach this. Yeah, but once you've got past mm. through that the first time round, then things get much quicker and yeah. easier, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, the process. I mean, it's a great process. It's really fascinating and you know, you get such a lot of insight into the way musicians work by writing things for them mm -hmm. in a way that you don't get just from performing with them. Right. So you, mm. you end up working with such a wide variety of performers, like top professionals and you've got the kids and um, Yeah. This and is I, really I often great. feel I often feel like the kids especially are so underestimated mm. by They don't need know, basic stuff, do they? No, they're really incredibly accomplished. And you know, I've worked with kids, teenagers who are much better, say, music readers than some professionals I know. But they're at a different stage in their life. So it's a really you know, it's every instrument, I treat the ensembles as if they're an instrument, a, just a really big instrument. So the instrument of a children's choir is really something that is like my native habitat, I suppose, mm, mm. Um, as well as the piano. So, yeah. And so the, piece, the piece I'm writing now for, um, for Sydney Children's Choir, they commissioned me to write a piece about the achievement of marriage equality in Australia which is a thing that means a lot to me because I was quite active in the campaign. But it's fantastic to be able to write something meaningful for kids and they have been through that time. So tell me about this uh, program that's coming up on the 16th of December. Oh, yes, um, that's Voices of Angels, uh, which is a Christmas concert. This year our um, Gondwana National Choir's director has gone away on long service leave. So the Christmas program has been put together by our assistant, um, Sam Allchurch, who I think your listeners might know from Sydney Chamber Choir yes, yes. as well. Um, he's a very accomplished musician, a super nice guy. And he's put together a program that is, it's like the 12 days of Christmas, but sort of cryptic. So every piece is kind of representative of one of the numbers mm -hmm. of the 12 days of Christmas. And the commission, the Marriage Equality Commission, which is called Forged in the Fire, uh, that is represented for five gold rings. Yeah. Our favourite bit of the Christmas of the okay. twelve days of Christmas. All right, so that's coming yeah. up at the City Recital Hall. Yes, on the sixteenth and seventeenth of December. So two performances, two shows. Wonderful. Yes. Well, that's really good. I hope people can go along and see Voices of Angels with a premiere by Sally Whitwell, and that's at the City Recital Hall with the Gondwana Voices. Is that right? Yes, with Sydney Children's Choir and some of the Na Gondwana National Choirs choristers well. will come to that as well. So it'll be an absolute cast of thousands. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in today, Sally. It's my pleasure.